In this video, we're going to do a, a quick nestle problem. Uh, not super quick, but <laughs> no nestle problem is super quick. There's always a bunch of cal calcs to do, but let's just show you the process of how we do it. And in this one, we're actually going to do an external flow problem. Uh, so we've got a metal rod that, uh, say, is being cured. Um, uh, and it's uh, at a certain temperature and suddenly exposed to uh, a fairly violently flowing uh, cross flow of air uh, at 50 meters per second, which is really fast. Okay, so we want to know how long it's going to take for that surface of the rod to reach a certain temperature. So let's follow our four steps. Step one, we want to identify our geometry, right? So we look at our table and we think, oh, well, this one's pretty straightforward. We've got a cross flow across a circular cylinder here, our rod. Uh, the trick is that we're going to have to uh, find uh, our Reynolds number before we can decide on the correlation equation. But we can figure that out. So now we know uh, the sort of category of, um, uh, of flow uh, geometry that we have. Our next step is to find a reference temperature. Now, why do we do that? We need a reference temperature because uh, fluid properties tend to be uh, highly dependent upon temperature, especially if there are big temperature changes. Uh, and so a lot of times we want to find an average temperature in a flow. Uh, and we can do that in a lot of different ways, right? In a, say, an external flow situation where I have a T infinity uh, and a surface temperature, I can figure out the, the temperature in the film, the place where things are actually happening uh, between the surface and uh, that flow far away from the surface. I can find a mean temperature uh, of, of pipe flow by looking at inlet and outlet temperature. And if I have a time uh, dependent problem, I can look at my, an initial temperature and a final temperature. Uh, and sometimes we have to guess, right? We might not know what our outlet temperature, maybe that's what we're trying to find uh, or what our surface temperature is. Uh, and so we, we look at a situation and we guess uh, and we find the properties with our guess number. And if we're really wrong at the end of the problem, we can always go back and just throw in new numbers, right? And sort of iterate towards a better solution. So in this case, uh, we have both time and um, uh, convection. So in order to find T surface, which changes over time, we actually average the surface at the beginning at the end, which we know both of those. And then we average that value with T infinity, which we happen to know here too as well. So this is, we don't have to make any guesses here, but we have to throw in a couple of extra temperatures. And we come up with a temperature for the film of 225. Uh, at that point, we want to look up those properties. And I've posted uh, some links in the notebook here, but also on the Moodle page uh, for water and, and air, which is what we use most often. Uh, and so you can uh, go to those links as well. You can also just do an internet search, although there's a lot of pages that um, are not particularly easy to read. So stick with the links if you're, uh, if you're trying to save time. And so these are our properties for uh, this particular problem. So you're going to look your the fluid properties that depend on temperature, viscosity, thermal conductivity, and the Prandtl number. All right, then we can find our Nussel number. And as we said before, in this case, in order to figure out what our power law coefficients are, um, we are going to need to figure out what our Reynolds number is. Uh, so first we calculate our Reynolds number, uh, just like you did in, uh, in fluids. Um, and we find a Reynolds number of 25,000. So that puts us in this category. And then these numbers here, which you can't see on this version of the table, are C, M, and N. These are coefficients uh, in a power law equation. Okay, And the power law equation looks like this, uh, where the function, nusseled is a function of Reynolds and Prandtl, as we know, uh, but it's in the form of an exponent. That's, that's why it's called a power law equation. Okay, So we'll see that, that form of the equation shows up a lot. Um, and what the table tells us is what those coefficients are. So I go up here and I say, oh, 25,000, my coefficients are 0 0.193, 0 0.618, uh, and one third. And then I solve that. Okay, so I've got a Nusselt number of 90, 
And that means that convection is about 90 times more effective than conduction would be alone, given the same uh, uh, material properties and geometric properties. Okay, so that means convection is working a lot, which we knew, right? We got a really fast flow, uh, 50 meters per second. It's a gas, so it's not going to be super effective, uh, but it's still it's still doing a lot of work here. Convection's working for us. Then step four is to actually solve for what we're looking for. We don't usually want the convection coefficient uh, or we even the Nusselt number. Um, what we want is to use those two things to figure out heat rates, fluxes, uh, time of change. Okay, so here we want to find the time of change, which is, you know, the transient problems we know how to do is a lumped capacitance problem. And this one looks like a lumped capacitance problem. We've got a relatively thin metal bar, so uh, temperature within the bar is probably going to stay uh, pretty consistent. Uh, and so we're going to use lumped capacitance. To do that, we need H, right? An H bar, the average H over the time. So we use our Nusselt, uh, uh, rearrange the Nusselt number equation uh, to find H bar. And we throw our numbers in there and get a convection coefficient of 185. Okay. Now, since this is lumped capacitance, we should double check that this works, right? That our B out number is under 0.1. Um, and so we throw our uh, field, uh, equation out there. And remember this difference, right? H uh, times a distance over K, H times a distance over K. These look very similar. The Nusselt number has K fluid in it. The Biot number has K solid in it. Okay. And then the characteristic length in the Biot uh, has a particular definition, so we calculate that characteristic length, uh, the volume divided by the surface area. So that tells us the kind of average distance uh, from the material to the surface, uh, which is R over 2. Uh, and we find that the BO number is 0 0.09, which is less than 0.1. And so we're okay. We can use uh, lumped uh, capacitance here. And then we solve it, right? So we go and we pull our lumped capacitance equation out uh, that gives us uh, a function for time, right? So T is equal to uh, tau, that coefficient tau, that gives us a, you know, an estimate of how long things are going to take to cool down uh, times a natural log. And we're just going to throw some numbers in there. And you can look carefully at this if you want to pause and figure out uh, where those numbers are coming from. Uh, and we find that tau is about 47.5. Now, even at this point, we can sort of stop and say to ourselves, okay, what does that mean? It means to cool down all the way, or to heat up rather, all the way uh, to about the fluid temperature, 350, takes three or four tau. So that would be three or four minutes, right? We're not going that far. We're going about halfway from 25 to 175. So that's not even 63%. So our time is going to be less than one tau. So we should expect that our uh, time here is going to lie somewhere 30 or 40 seconds. Okay. So we know if we make a mistake in our math. Uh, and then we finish up our math. It turns out that we get 62% uh, of the way um, from 25 to 350, or, uh, uh, and that gives us a, a, a time of 29.5 seconds. So we need to keep that rod in that hot flow uh, for 29 seconds if it cured at, uh, at 175. And that's how we do a Nusselt number problem.